Good morning. Come. Good morning, Oasis. Welcome to church today. Welcome if you're listening online. I just want to encourage you in the word of God today. And if you got something going on in your life, God knows exactly what he's doing in every situation and in every circumstance. He can take every problem and every mess you've made and turn it into something beautiful for his glory and for a testimony. I just want you to stand up, lift your heart up to Jesus, and worship him with us today. Praise you, Jesus. I search the world. But it couldn't fill me. Man, empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. Oh, but you came along and put me back together. And every desire.
pause just one moment and pray for the worship team for the sound. Lord God, I thank you so much that you are not a God that cares about production and form and fashion. We just want to give you excellence and we just ask for you to help the people to enter in despite the technical difficulties, that they would experience you in all your fullness of your glory, Lord God, and worship you regardless of what the circumstances are around us, Lord God. But we ask you to fix what's broken, heal what needs to be healed, and deliver who needs to be delivered regardless because you are the almighty one, true and living God who is well able. We thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
song unto the Lord and Lord we just come to declare how good you are and that you're still a miracle working God that you are a God of miracles the words are fairly simple but just grab on to one thing that God is good Good doesn't seem like adequate enough of a word to describe how he is, but that's what the Bible says. So Lord, we just come to declare that you're good. You're good, God. I've lived stories that have proved your faithfulness. And I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend. There is beauty in what I can understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. And I believe you're the wonder working God. You're the wonder working God. All the miracles I've seen, too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles I've seen, you're too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Just the mention of your name can raise the dead. So all the glory to the only one who can. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. Oh, I believe you're the wonder-working God. You're the wonder-working God. All the too good to not believe you're the wonder working God 
know if you were in the service last week when Pastor Peter was preaching about how, and we sung about it today, how God is the God of the mountain, but he's also the God of the valley. And don't underestimate our God, that he could do all things exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. But he's also present in those everyday moments those everyday moments, those miraculous big moments where he shows himself strong. But Lord, we ask you to give us a vision also for those everyday moments when we just have to say and raise our hands and say, God, you're good. And when I hear y'all say that, God, you're good. Hallelujah. And we're going to continue to sing about his goodness. As I've seen cancer disappear, I've seen metal plates dissolve. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen troubled souls delivered. I've seen addicts finally free. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We'll see cities in revival and salvation flood the streets. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We see glory fill the nations like this world has never ever seen. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Cause I believe you're the wonder working God. You're the wonder working God. All the miracles I've seen. Light in the darkness, my God, 
Good is who you are. 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 God, you're good. God, we've come today to declare that you're good. You're so, so good. for all the things that you can do but most of all we thank you for you and who you are who you are to us oh how we love you Jesus we love you God Holy Spirit we thank you we welcome you we receive your presence as you receive our worship Father God, we thank you for the rest of this service and every heart represented here, every household represented here, every workplace represented here, and everything that your people touch, Lord God. We thank you for each one of them, and we pray that they will continue to experience you throughout this service, that you'll speak to our hearts, oh God. We love you. We love you say I love you and we say we love you we mean that from the bottom of our hearts we love you God in the name of Jesus we pray and we thank you amen and amen thank you we welcome you once again thank you for worshiping with us have a seat greet your neighbor and turn your attention to FYI Thanks for visiting Oasis Christian Center. Here are some things we have happening at Oasis. If you've ever wanted to volunteer with our teams, there are plenty of opportunities to do so. Specifically, our parking lot team, volunteer central team, and kids church are all looking for support to help grow. There are various commitment levels that may suit you. For more information, talk to someone at the Blue Room and join us as we live out our vision of knowing God, finding hope, and making a difference. Takeover Youth meets this Friday at 7.30 p.m. in the main auditorium. Takeover is for anyone grades 6 through 12. Our next water baptism service will be Wednesday, November 2nd at 7.30 p.m. If you are interested in being baptized, contact Pastor Peter at the number below on screen. Thank you all for your faithfulness and giving. 
It helps us make a difference around the corner and around the world. The best way to give is online by visiting oasisnj.net and clicking the Give button. You can visit oasisnj.net for more information on everything I mentioned and more. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media accounts. Thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of the service. All right. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? You guys good? It is a good day. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we're just going to dive right into God's Word this morning, get started, and uh, it's good to see you guys. I do want to mention just with our volunteers, Central, as uh, we we're just talking about at FYI, we, your, your support, what you give um, in, in volunteering aspect enables us to really meet, reach so many different people. And so I encourage you, if you're not plugged in some way, find out how you can get connected. Some of those areas there, they are uh, they're huge uh, to be able to help impact more people, and uh, we just thank you in advance for your assistance to make that happen. Amen? Good stuff, good stuff. Well, hey, um, anyways, I know they're doing some adjustment, I think, to my mic, but other than that, I think I got it on, so we're good. But, um, hey, I, you know, it's funny, I was preparing and what this message I was going to speak on, and then I ended up having, like, some things I added to it, so I've kind of started combining two messages, uh, so we'll be here for a couple, of, no, we're not going to be here a couple hours, but uh, that's not really my goal, but um, anyways, you know, I think we all go through, have been through life's challenges and situations, and obstacles and the circumstances we deal with, those issues that really, when we face them many times, um, it, it's, it's in limited power. You don't, have, you don't know how to deal with it. You don't know how to face it. You don't know how to, uh, to take care of it. So a lot of times what happens in those moments, it's like you're pulling from, uh, you're, you're reaching in, pulling from what's on the inside of you. You have nothing on the inside of you, then you have nothing to pull out and fight that with, right? And so, um, and it begins to be this kind of me against the world kind of encounter with the situation. But as a Christ follower, as a person that knows Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, who has made the decision to follow him, that, that should not be how we deal with that. It should not be the direction that we go with that. It should not be how we face those situations. Um, because when a person gives their life to Jesus Christ, there's this supernatural transformation that takes place. The Bible talks about the fact that we're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And sometimes we hear things like that, and we hear it, and we just kind of think, oh yes, hallelujah, praise God, thank you, Jesus. But the real test of time comes when when you're really struggling, when you're really dealing with something that is bigger than you, that, is, that, it, that feels stronger than you in that scenario. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it, it's a great verse. We, we hear it. It's written, you, know, you can find it on t-shirts. You find it at sporting events, all kinds of things. Uh, players wearing it, quoting it, and it says this. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we know that verse. But I think it's important, as any, any Bible verse that we read, you've always got to make sure that you go back and look at the context of what is being said with that verse. Because this verse really is not a, you know, a motivational verse. It's not a victory chant verse. When we really look at the context of what's being said, think about this. If, if someone went through your text messages and pulled out just one or two sentences within the conversation, they can make it, they can make it sound like you're saying anything, right? They can really make something that's absolutely harmless look very bad, really. And you might know what I'm talking about. So. Have you ever been misquoted by somebody? You're like, I didn't say that. Or I said that, but I didn't really say that. That's what was I saying. But you're taking just a couple of words of what I said, pulling it out and saying something, and it's like, that's really not what I meant. You know what I'm talking about. But we do that to Scripture all the time. We, we don't really take the time to look at the context of it. We, we find a, pa a pa uh, you know, popular passage of Scripture, and it's like, wow, that's great. Yes, pull it out. But to really know the full depth and the meaning of it, you've really got to go back and look at what it was said before and what was said after. When was it said? Why was it said? Who was it said to? What was taking place when it was said? Because it's in that that we truly find the strength. And yes, it is true that there is that point of encouragement that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's great. That's good to know that. It's absolutely true. But looking at the context when Paul is saying this, we find that Paul didn't write those words from a place of victory. Paul is actually in prison, facing death. He's abandoned. He doesn't know what's going on with it. And so he, he writes this, obviously from a place of strength within his life, but, but really from the worldly perspective, he was a loser. Then the people that put him there, the people that are looking at him, they're thinking, this guy Paul is crazy. He doesn't have anything. You know, we've got him. We're going to stop him now from doing preaching and going forward in it. And so he pins this word, and, you know, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But before that is where we have to really look to see what did he say leading up to it. So the place that he's writing it from, we have to remember, is a prison. Now, it's not a prison like today. I'm not, I've never been in prison. I've known people that have. Um... 
I'm not saying it's a good place, but it definitely is nothing like what Paul was experiencing. Many years ago, I had the opportunity on a, uh, on a um, it was a trip of, um, it was the seven, church, uh, the seven Churches Book of Revelation. No, that wasn't it. It was uh, Footsteps of Paul. That was what it was called. And basically, it went and followed Paul with all the places. And, and so we went to this exact prison, what they believed to be the exact prison because of just the names and how the places were. And went down into this like damp, dark prison that is, it's funny, you're on the street, but then you go into it, then it's, it's down below this building and the bottom of it, and it's just damp. It's like, you're just, we were down there for about, I don't know, a half hour, 40 minutes, something like that. We had a little mini service down there with Bishop Tony Miller when uh, I went with him with that and a group that he took. And um, I remember we were down there, and just like your bones started to start to ache after a while. But you've been in a really damp place. You feel it, and it's just like, ah. Uh. And I think that Paul was in this place for the amount of time that he was stuck in prison. But from that, writes from a place of a strength that's bigger and stronger than him. And this is what he says. He, he starts this in Philippians 4, verse 10 through 12, which is the verses before this. He says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Now that I'm speaking of, be, uh, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Remember, where is he? He's in prison. He's writing from a prison that no doubt had uh, free-flowing sewage through it, moist, wet conditions, on rock. I mean, we're not talking small, nice, fancy rock. This is like boulders and things, rocks that it's, it's, it's made of. You walk on it, it's like you had to watch when we went through it that you didn't trip on it. You know, because it, was, it wasn't cut nicely. There was, no, there was no agency coming back and making sure that the prisoner was going to have all his rights and was going to be okay and not get hurt. They didn't care. They stuck you down there because they didn't want, want you around. And so here he is. He's writing this, and he says, I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In anything and every circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, that I can do all things through him who strengthens me writing it from a place in prison. So now, listen, that, does that mean that God doesn't want to work in our life? Of course he wants to do that, but, but, but really when we look at what he's talking about, he's talking to those that are struggling. They're in a, it's a reminder of an encouragement that when life is tough, God is still with you. When you feel completely by yourself, when everything has not worked out the way that you want it to work out, and everything that you thought was going to happen did not happen, and that's usually when most people want to just throw the towel and give up and say, forget this whole thing. But it's in that point that Paul makes his determination to tell people, listen, because he's talking to a bunch of people that were either in persecution or would be going into persecution. And he's saying, listen, guys, I want you to know I've learned how to be content. If everything's going great, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm up here. But if everything's going bad, like right now, being in prison in this mess that I'm in right now, I'm still okay. God has still seen me through. I think that's so important for us to know because so many times we live as Christians in this roller coaster, as long as everything's going good, we're like, yes, woo, 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 thank you, Jesus, yes, yes, yes. And then we forget about the point when everything is dragging across the bottom of the floor. We're like, why is this happening to me? I'm a Christian. Because we live in a fallen world that struggles and has situations and circumstances. We were never promised not to have trouble. Jesus said, in this life, you're going to have trouble. So I'm not saying this to say, well, I just a great inspirational message. I feel completely depressed. Why did I turn in? Why am I watching today? Why am I sitting here today? But the fact is, we need to know, how, what do we do when we're going through the difficulty times in our life? Because you're going to deal with them. You're going to have those. And Paul's making this point of saying, hey, when you're there, you need to know this. You need to remind yourself this. You need to celebrate this, that you're in it, but you're not in it alone. I don't know about you, but it's so much better when you know, so when, you're, when you're by yourself and you have nobody with you and nobody around you to stand with you in the middle of it, man, that is one of the most loneliest places that you could be. But when you know that even if everybody else around you does abandon you, God, you promised in your word that you will never leave me and you will never forsake me. And Paul is reminding the people that he's writing to, he's reminding us today to know this, you are not alone. Paul says, I can be content because I know no matter where I am in life at this moment that, God, you are with me. And because of that, I can do all things. Through, I can get through the prison. I can get through the good times. I can get through the bad times. I can get through the insecure times. I can get through the, 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 the issues and all the things. I can get through those because I know that you're with me. And that's not always the American package that we want to hear because 
you know, we like everything to have that successful ending, right? We want everything to have that good smiley part because, but, you know, as I've been in places around the world and watched believers that were going to be persecuted for their faith and friends that I have, I've shared with them in India that, that, that are struggling with, with the, the issues that are going on there that are very anti anything other than the, 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 the Hindu religion that is there, whether you're Muslim or whether you're Christian or whether any of the other tribal religions that are in India. They're literally, their lives are on the line for those that are preaching, those that are out front, those that are, that, that are sharing the gospel. It's a reality. They deal with the fact of not knowing what's going to happen to them. So what do they do? They do what they do because they know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you're dealing with your work situation. And you're dealing with people that have come against you and that have pulled you down and attacked you in work and trying to get you fired and all kind of stuff. What do you do? I can do all things. I can stand in the midst of this. I can still come through this. Because why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you're dealing with the difficulty times of life, you're like, I don't understand, God, why hasn't things changed? I can do all things through Christ because, God, you're strengthening me through this situation. I'm saying it's, it's not the happy little package message that we want to hear. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about? But it's the reality because all of us do go through times in our life when everything is not happy all the time. Everything is not convenient all the time. And that's why as believers, we have to make that determination that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, even when it really stinks. That's important because that gives you the strength to be able to celebrate when everything's going good, to know that no matter whether I'm up here, whether down here, the, God, the fact is, is that you're with me and see me through. So it's a, and to those that are, are struggling, it's, a, it's that encouragement that when life is tough, God is with you, you're not alone. It's a challenge to view happiness through a different lens. Because a lot of times, as we've talked, I've talked about this before, it, you know, our happiness based upon the, comes from the word hap stance, the, the happenings in our life. We're, we're happy because of the happenings in our life. You got a bonus, I'm happy. You, 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 got, you lost your job, I'm not happy anymore. Okay? <laughs> so you're not, you know, so, but, but, but that's where it comes back, and that's not some kind of weird kind of twist thing. Well, I lost my job, hallelujah. No, we're not saying to say hallelujah because you lost your job. But hallelujah for the fact that despite that I may have lost my job is the fact that I know that, God, you're still with me. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because you're going to see me through. You're going to enable me to move through this situation, move through this circumstance, because he's bigger than that. I know he's got me. He said he'll never leave me. He's not going to abandon me. See, it's, it's understanding. Because, I, listen, for years I, I've talked with people that have gone through tough times and I get emails and things like that. I've had over and over responses to try to help people. They're like, well, you know, I'm just kind of, my faith is shaken. My faith, well, your faith is going to be shaken. It's in the shaking that you really see what faith you really have. Life, the enemy, friends, family, people are going to shake your faith. How are you going to stand? And so there's a, this story, I, I, you may have heard it before. Oh, I'm going to finish this. So we said it, it's a challenge to view happiness through a different lens that's not derived from what we possess, but by who possesses us. I think that's an important point. When I say possess, I'm, it's like getting around Halloween time. People are like, oh, possession. And the, no, what, what belongs to you? Like we, see, we, we, we don't, see, we're, our, our happiness is, and our, our joy and our strength is not derived from what we possess. So we can, we all know this. You ever get something really new, you're excited about it, and give it a, a week, give it a, give it a month, it's just old again, right? It just it fits in the old category. It's like, you know, like the kid, Christmas time, and the kids open the door, oh, thank you, this is my favorite toy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, another one? Oh, oh, oh this is my favorite toy, this is so great. Well, where's the old toy? It's in the corner over there. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You know, like, oh, that was a waste of money. Because each new happy thing just push the old one aside and we move on. But see, we're, it, our, our faith, our hope, our joy cannot be derived from what we possess. But knowing that who possesses us. When we make Jesus Christ Lord of life, what do we do? We acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior. We are giving our life to him. He possesses us. My joy must come from the Father not from what happens in this wor world around me. Listen, I want happiness. I think we all, we want that. We don't want, you know, I want to have another miserable day today. No, we never want that. But the reality is that it's, it's part of the human experience. And so many people's faith gets shaken 
when they come to that part in their life where they have that disrupted time in their life when everything that they did not plan begins to crumble and fall apart or it's just not what they expected. And we say, my faith is being shaken. But in rea- yes, it's true, but in reality, it's just, it's part of the, 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 the human experience. We're going to deal with those times. Jesus warned you of, us, of those times. And what he says is, when it happens, don't fear. I'm with you. That's, see, honestly, that's what we need to remind ourselves the most. God, it doesn't make any difference what it looks like, seems like, feels like, acts like. God, you're with me. You have not abandoned me. And sometimes people say, well, I guess God just doesn't love you anymore because that you're going through this situation. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do, now it's even more to see God bring you through those things. Some of you have gone, some of you have gone through cancer. Some of you have gone through other diseases and other situations and family breakups and loss of loved ones and over, we've all, so many of us have experienced those things. And the fact that you're sitting here despite what you went through, hallelujah, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to move through it. God, you're helping me. You're, you're, you're giving me strength to get through it. That's what we're doing, moving forward. But honestly, I don't even know who that's for because the reality, that's what I got this morning and added to my message. That's not even my message. And I don't know. It may end up being my message because I'm not done with that yet. But I, I want to read this other thing, which I, this, move, this story has always moved me. Some of you probably know the, 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 kind of the, the idea behind it. But it's, it, it's the song, that, you know, um, It Is Well With My Soul. And so this is a little backstory from it. I'm not going to sing it for you, but it's a very popular song. I'll read the lyrics in a second. But in 1870, Horatio Gates Spafford was a successful Chicago lawyer with every reason to be thankful and faithful to God. You know, his family, a great family, and, you know, God had blessed him. He, he was a very wealthy man, and, you know, but had a man with God's, with a heart after God. It wasn't just that he, his you know, money was like, oh, it's my money, but the fact that he was promoting and helping, the, you know, moving the gospel forward and what he had but in, 1870, in um, 1871, his four-year-old son died. And while struggling with that personal tragedy, the great Chicago fire took place that same year. And because his investment was all in property and businesses and buildings, uh, it reduced their family's property value investments and financial security into complete ashes. And what remained ended up being completely devalued by the financial downturn followed by that great fire that took place in Chicago in that year. So basically, he's left with not very much at all. And so to give the family time and space to recover, Horatio made plans for him and his wife and his four daughters to join and encourage, at then time, uh, Moody, who was a a famous evangelist that was going through Europe and seeing people come to Christ. And so he decided, you know what? Everything we've lost, let's just pack up. Let's just go over, and we'll go with Moody and and the group that were going through evangelizing throughout Europe at that time. And so he, on this preaching tour, and so that's what they decided to do. So they go to board this ship called the SS Ville de uh, Havar. Sorry, my French is really bad, but um, but anyways, my French is pretty non-existent. So, but anyways, so that it's a French named ship. But I was boarding this this ocean liner in November 1873, and he, because of a business emergency, came up. Horatio had to remain in Chicago while he sent his family on ahead. As they're crossing the Atlantic Ocean in the mid of the ocean, that ship collided with another ship and sank within 12 minutes. The loss of life was 226 passengers out of the 307 passengers and crew. Several days later, Horatio receives a telegram from his wife in Wales. Her name was Anna, and she said, saved alone. In other words, all four of their daughters, Annie, Maggie, Bessie, and their baby, Tanita, were torn from the mother's arm by the force of the water as the ship went down. Horatio immediately set off for Wales to bring his wife home. And on the, the crossing to Wales, the ship's captain summons him up to the front of the ship, to the bridge, and he informs him that, and this is his words, he's, the, 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 pilot, the captain's uh, words was that a, 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 a careful reckoning had come, uh, sorry again, a careful reckoning has been made, and I believe that we are now passing the place where the Ville de Havar was wrecked. And Horatio G. Spafford returned to his cabin after being there and passing over the area where the ship went down and his four daughters were submerged by the water right there. He returns to his cabin, and that night he wrote the words which become the hymn, It is well with my soul. Horatio recorded that we passed over the spot where she went down in mid-ocean. The water's three miles deep, but I do not think of our dear ones there, for they are safe, folded in the arms of the Lord. See, what a place is your... what passing over where he knew that the bodies of his daughters had sunk down. Yet at the same time saying, hey, they're not there. 
They're, they're with their master. They're with, with, with my Lord and Savior. And so this is what he writes. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, lest they blessed, this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood from my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. That strength comes from a place where God's word is implanted into a life. It is not drawing on just the good things in life, but that rises up in the struggles of life because of the seed that's implanted in God's word, the seed that is there, the seed that enables us to stand in the midst of that when we make the determination to know and, and, and can at that place be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't, I don't really know what maybe struggles and situations you may have dealt with and and victories and sorrows and situations that you've done. But the, the fact is this, that, that when you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's a change that takes place. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. See, th that's got to be the picture because so many times our, our, you know, we say, oh yeah, just say this simple little prayer and, and you're saved. Hallelujah. Just, just, say, just say, say the words. I don't care what, to, just say the words. It's not just saying words. It's, it's, it's making a decision to say, I am choosing to embrace Christ in my life. I'm choosing to declare him as my Lord and my Savior. I'm, I'm choosing, and when I do that, it says if I'm in Christ, I'm connected with Christ, abiding in Christ, it says that, that I'm a new person, a new creation in Christ Jesus. I've kind of joked about this before. I, you know, when I was a kid, remembering that, it was just like, what kind of, you know, the, the King James, you're, you're a new, new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm like, what kind of creature do you become? You know, what does that mean? As a little kid, I, that's what kind of, I don't, you know, because the sun is going, like, a creature? What kind of creature, you know? You know, but it's what he's saying is that something's transformed completely. That's why we're able to stand in the place. And, and when life is not always the greatest, when life, everything's not, we can literally understand it's not about when every, I'm, I'm not a, a person that just, when everything's happening that's good with me, but the fact is that I have this strength. I'm, I'm a new person in Christ Jesus that is able to stand, not because of my strength, but Christ in me that I have. God's word that is transformed within my life. And, you know, that word, Transformation, that new creation is that scientific term that we all learned in school, metamorphosis. And what's interesting, it's that, you know, that, that thing from a, a caterpillar going and turning into a butterfly, this little worm kind of thing that, that somehow or another wraps itself in a cocoon. And one day it cracks that open and opens up and all of these big wings come out and it stretches the wings and then it takes off and flies and it's beautiful. No longer stuck by having to, to crawl around on the ground or the trees, but now it can fly from tree to tree and soar above every situation that it's dealing with it. And that's the picture of a new creation. Does it mean it's always, it's always going to be good and happy? But the fact is knowing that in that strength that I, that I'm not, yeah, you know, the thing about this, it's the same creature, but at the same time, two entirely different creations. And that's why sometimes we say, well, I don't understand. I, I feel the same way as this. Because you are the same person, but in reality, you're an entirely different person because of Christ in you. And that's that struggle. I have to make a decision. And I'm going to things. Who, what am I going to pull from? Am I going to pull from me? Am I going to pull from Christ in me? I think that's really kind of the big thing that we have to look at. What are we, what's the strength that we're pulling from? You know, I'm thinking about it like this way. I know I, you know, when I kind of had to like lose weight because of, you know, whatever reasons we lose weight for at times. And I don't know, the moment that you say you're on a diet, right? All you just think about, I just want to eat everything, you know? It's like, it's like when, when you say, I'm going to go on a fast. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast 40 days. No, you're not really, if you've never fasted, you're never going to fast 40 days. So that's not going to, you're not going to make that. 
you know, and, and so what, yeah, I'm going to fast. And the moment you could have had a huge meal before, but the moment that you say you're going to start to fast, it's like, I just want to eat everything that I see. I'm thinking of every, every dessert I don't even like, you know. The same thing. If you're on a diet, you're going to do that. And so you go through those kind of stairs. But they tell you, you have to, you have to pull from a different source, you know. You got to think about where they, it, you know, there used to be a commercial on TV. They had put a little, they put a bikini, the lady put a bikini on like the wall or something like that. And, and everything, she walked past and that was her thing that she looked at. She's pulling from not the, the refrigerator, but she's pulling from where she wants to go in that. And I'm not talking about positive thinking. This. I'm just simply saying, what are we pulling from? When we're going through life, when you hit, the, when, you hit when, when life slams up against something, what is it that you reach over and you pull from? What is it that you reach down and you grab a hold of that gives you the strength to hold on, that gives you the strength to move forward, that gives you the strength to take the step? To know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, even when it really stinks. Or if I you know, was on a Sunday, we'd say the word sucks. But because I want to be nice to people, we won't say that word. Okay? We'll just say stinks. Is that okay? You good? Some of you are like, what was he talking about? What did he just do? Oh, my goodness. He just said it. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I just said it. But sometimes that's what, I mean, Life just really stinks. Thank you. Thank you. At least somebody's a Christian in this place. Hallelujah. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. But no, I just want you to know this. That when we go through those times, man, God is with us. That his strength is there. But the enemy will do everything he can to get you to draw from something else. From fear, discouragement, that God's abandoned you, that you're not good enough, you're not holy enough, you're not Christian enough. I'll just simply say that there's not one person in this room that, that's Christian enough, that's holy enough, that's perfect enough. So you're in good company. Amen? Until you get to heaven, none of us are going to get it all together. Even Paul says... I don't get it all. I don't have it all together. And if Paul can say that, that he ain't got it all together, I'm good. Now, that doesn't give me a free pass to, to just do whatever. Understand? Because I got to say that because, oh, well, good. Hallelujah. I'll just go do whatever I want now. No, that is not a free pass. Paul is simply saying is, listen, you, you, so it's like we, pr we, we, he always said, I press toward the mark. So I'm pressing. But I, when I miss the mark, I can't allow the enemy to beat me up so much that I completely abandon everything that it is that God has done in my life. Because that's what Satan wants to do in your life. I mean, Horatio, when he's on that boat going over the spot where his, his ship went down with his four daughters, man, he could have thrown the towel in. But you know what they ended up doing? He and his wife, they went on. They had, I think, a couple more kids after that. They packed everything up. They went to Jerusalem. They created something called, it was an American colony there, that they, they used it as an opportunity to minister to the people, the, the, the Muslims and the Jewish and the Christians that were there in, in Jerusalem back in the eight, late 1800s. The American colony, then it was kind of disbanded, but the, the, the place that they had built there actually became a, it's called the American Colony Hotel, which was actually one of the, the peace accords, I think the Oslo Peace Accord, I believe it was, that took place, was actually signed between the Palestinians and the Jews at that time. I don't you know where everything went from that point, but it was used as an opportunity to promote peace in the midst of a place where there's not much peace. So instead of, he could have packed it all up and said, forget it, God, I'm not serving you. I served you and my daughters died. But from a place of strength, he reaches down and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, even when it's really difficult in my life. Because you're bigger than me, God. Your strength is bigger than me, and you're going to see me through. I don't know what it is that you're dealing with today. Well, that was the message one of two, so we won't do that today. So, But I don't know what it is that you're dealing with today. But I want you to know this. You're not alone. One is, that's why you need, that's why you need the body of Christ around you. One of the, the, this, I think one of the most tragic things that the whole pandemic did that it, it put people in a place where we had to isolate because of the scenarios and the things that we're dealing with. And I understand, you know, we don't, you know, many of us have, have friends, have family that have died from it and the COVID, from COVID and things like that. And, but you know what? Satan, had, I believe, has really used that to isolate the body, to isolate people, to create fear in people's lives. 
There's a point that we have to be able to, to understand that Satan will do everything he can to divide you from the things that are going to give you life. He'll do it in a marriage. He'll do it in a family. He'll do it in the church. He'll do it in relationships. Because his method is divide and conquer. And if he can divide you from the body of Christ, then you will feel lonely. You will feel isolated. You will feel not connected. You need the body. Amen? I thank God for the ability that we have to reach out and touch people. In fact, I ran into a person in another country that will tell the story a little bit another time, but and the guy stands to me, I'm standing in a line, and he goes, I know you. I'm like, you don't know me. I've never been here before. And he goes, no, no, I know you. And I was like, and I, was like I, you, you, I, I don't think you really know me, you know? And um, so, but I said, whatever. He goes, what do you do? And I said, I'm a pastor. He goes, yes, I do know you. I watch your videos. I was 7,000 miles away. I was like, are you kidding me? He goes, yeah, I watch, I watch you on, t on, the, on the computer, watch the, the church. See, you never know whose life is being touched by you. What God is doing in your life. You know the fact that God, you, that you will work through my life, your life, our life, to touch people's lives in a way that brings them hope in a hopeless world. That's the God that we serve. So whatever you're going through today, first I'm going to tell you don't give up. You're not alone. Don't allow the enemy to isolate you. So I, I love the fact that we reach out and people are being impacted by our ministry, other ministries, and we've been able to reach people that we never would have been able to reach before. But the other aspect is, is it becomes convenient to be isolated. And Satan will use that create fear and hopelessness because the reality is you have to be around people it's just you know it, the way the scripture talks about the fact don't don't abandon the assembling of yourselves together that wasn't just about the, the same people oh yeah no, you miss church so don't abandon no but the enemy would do everything he can to keep you away but that was the key thing that kept the body of christ through the great persecutions in the early church was the fact that they would band together their togetherness was a place of encouragement. Their togetherness was a place of hope. Their togetherness was a place that when one was discouraged, that they could lift up and they could encourage them that, that you got this and come together and you move forward. God he hasn't abandoned you. He's with you. When the enemy comes in, he always works to try to isolate us. Because when we're isolated, we feel like we are hopeless, abandoned, and there's no way out of this. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, but you also need to be connected to the body. People, other people, breathing people, not digital people, okay? People that are breathing, people that you can say, hey, that can see you and say, hey, this is what I'm going through. This is the struggle that I'm dealing with. And for us to be people to other people, to have hope and strength to other people that Christ puts in us so that we can encourage others. So no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, know this. You're not alone. Maybe you're going through victory right now. Maybe everything is good. Then you can be the strength of somebody else. Amen? Because that's what the body does. We help strengthen those that are going through difficult times because you know what? You're going to be there, and that's where I just thank God that someone's going to pick me up, lift me up, and I'm going to move forward. And thank God you're going to help me through the situation too. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you today. As we close out this service, Father God, that your, your strength, your power, your hope, your presence just begins to move in people's lives in a greater capacity today. Father, no matter how good the happiness may be or not happy in our life, it's the fact is this, to know that you can do, that we can do all things through you. Not, it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, the happiness is there or not there, but the simple fact is this, because in all things, as Paul exclaimed, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Father, for those that may be going through some real struggles right now that are in this house or watching, Father, I just ask that the Holy Spirit just, just move upon their heart right now. Whatever that struggle may be, whatever that loss may be, whatever that pain that they're dealing with, Lord, Father, I just we stand in agreement. As a, as a congregation, we stand in agreement today, Father, for peace and strength to just flood through their heart right now. Let them know that your word says that they are not alone. That you are there to meet their need, that you have, they may not, they're not abandoned, they're not by themselves, it may feel like it, it may look like it, but they are not alone. That just as Paul 
prisoned in a cell in the lower parts of the, uh, of the ground in this, in this prison that was there. But Paul makes the exclamation, though it looks like he's alone, it looks like he's abandoned, but he makes the exclamation, is that I am not alone. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That promise echoes into each person's today, their life, and where they may be, that God, you're walking them through this. So let that be what we draw from. Let that be what we reach down and grab a hold of and pull into our life today and remind ourselves when it seems like we forget, I am not alone. I can do all things, even this thing, through Christ who strengthens me. In Jesus' name, amen. You need prayer, we'd love to pray with you afterwards. You're dismissed. Have an amazing day. God bless you. Thank you.